Hello my motor enthusiasts. Toto Wolff, team principal of Mercedes, has pulled no punches in his critique of the 2023 Mercedes car, following another disappointing race at the Brazilian GP. Both Lewis Hamilton and George Russell found themselves embroiled in a midfield battle, a scenario far from their usual front-running exploits. This, according to Wolff, is inexcusable. The car's performance has taken a dramatic turn, going from podium finishes to eighth place in just one week. It's clear that a significant overhaul is needed for next year's contender. In other news, the new regulations introduced in 2022 have been causing some discomfort amongst the drivers. The shift to ground effect cars has led to Lando Norris, amongst others, struggling with back issues. The stiffer structure and lower profile of these cars have led to less aggressive curb attacks and a demand for softer cars. This new breed of F1 machines is not only testing the teams but also the physical limits of the drivers. Quite a challenging season indeed. Hey everyone! This is your favorite F1 guide, Enzo. And I'm William, ready to delve into the intricacies of the sport. We'll be with you all on F1 Motor Fever podcast every day, same time. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell. It goes a long way in supporting our podcast. Now, let's put the pedal to the metal. Deja vu seems to be the mood in the Mercedes camp. Lewis Hamilton expressed his eagerness for this season to end, and Toto Wolff didn't hold back in his critique of the 2023 car's performance. It's a stark contrast to the last weeks where we saw the car fighting for podium positions. Now, it's struggling to keep up with the midfield. Wolff's disappointment was palpable when he declared the performance inexcusable. He spoke of the car's difficulty in maintaining a competitive edge, and his words clearly bore the weight of frustration. It's not every day you hear a team principal say their car doesn't deserve a win. George Russell's retirement from the race due to a potential power unit failure might have been a merciful release, considering the ongoing struggles. The question on everyone's lips now is, can Mercedes bounce back in the upcoming two races in Las Vegas and Abu Dhabi? Let's wait and see. Now, shifting gears a bit, let's talk about the physical toll these Formula 1 cars take on the drivers. McLaren's Lando Norris has highlighted issues with back pain, apparently exacerbated by the new regulations introduced in the 2022 season. These new regulations resulted in a shift to ground effect cars that are stiffer and lower to the ground than their predecessors. This has altered the way drivers attack curbs and has also led to problems with the car bouncing on certain tracks, which in turn has resulted in back problems for some drivers, Carlos Sainz and Lewis Hamilton among them. Norris has expressed a wish for a softer car design in the future, reminiscing about the comfort of the pre-2022 seasons. He's not alone in this sentiment. Charles Leclerc, Sergio Perez, Nico Hülkenberg, and Valtteri Bottas, while not suffering as much, also pointed out how the stiffness limits their maneuverability, especially in dirty air. As this issue of driver comfort and safety continues to escalate, it's worth pondering if it could prompt changes in the 2026 season. What do you think? It's certainly an area that needs attention. The physical demands of driving these cars are immense, and anything that impacts driver health and performance needs to be thoroughly examined. It's not just about speed and aerodynamics, after all. The drivers are a crucial part of the equation, and their well-being must be a priority. Now, William, have you had a chance to look at some of the latest chatter on the internet? Indeed, I have. So, we've got a post here from Arato, stating, quote, Horner, F1 sprint format doesn't work for fans, drivers, or teams, unquote. Oh, now that's a contentious topic. Indeed it is. We've got Joe saying, quote, even F1 doesn't know what to do with sprints. The drivers don't really care, neither does FIA or Liberty. They all seem confused after each sprint race, like it was a junior's karting race, unquote. Ha, huh, that's a bit harsh, don't you think? Perhaps, but we have Molo chiming in, suggesting the incorporation of reverse grids and prize money to make the sprints more exciting. An idea which raised a few eyebrows I must say. Ah, that's an interesting thought. Meanwhile, Volps is intrigued that the idea of reverse grids is back on the table, reminding us that the teams weren't too keen on it in the past. Always a way to stir up debate, isn't it? Speaking of debate, there's a lively discussion about whether the sprints should be softer or harder. Oh really? Absolutely. Mons wasn't a fan of the old system, whereas Teddy disagrees, arguing that sprint races should be a championship decider, not just a sideshow. Hee hee, always a lot to digest from these online discussions. 
Thanks for that, William Turner. That's a wrap for today, folks. A big thank you to all our listeners out there. We've had a great time discussing the physical impact of the new regulations on our drivers, and some lively internet debates around the sprint format. Remember, your engagement makes a huge difference. So, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment, and share our podcast with your friends. And let's not forget about those heated dinner table debates. Nothing like a good old discussion about Formula One to light up the evening, eh? Make sure you're back here for our next episode, it's going to be a cracker, just like all the others. Absolutely, we're thoroughly looking forward to it. Remember, folks, we're here every day for your Formula One fix. So until next time, keep the conversations lively and the debates passionate. And remember, Smith, pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road, our channel's content is pure gold. Goodbye for now, and take care.